Good day everyone, my name is Lim Kai Yen. I work as an emergency physician. I am also a certified instructor for Life Saving Society as well as the Aquatic Life Support Society. Today, I'm going to talk about Bronze Medina Certification, its syllabus followed by the demonstration of the water test. Bronze Medellin Certification is the basic requirement for many water rescue organizations as well as personnel such as the lifeguards. Bronze Medellin Examination Syllabus consists of three parts. First would be the theoretical test. The theoretical test may be conducted in various settings. Some examiners prefer to conduct the theoretical test in a Viva-like session where the examiner asks the question verbally and the candidate are expected to answer them by words. However, some examiner would prefer to conduct the test in a written form where the examiner prepare test paper and candidate are supposed to write in their answer on the test paper. Next, the second part of the exam would be cardiopulmonary resuscitation. For candidates who have no CPR certification prior to the exam, the instructor or the examiner may conduct CPR course and test to certify the candidates as CPR provider. For those who have obtained CPR certification prior to Bronze Medellin examination, you may inform and show your certificate to your instructor and examiner. For some examiner, upon showing CPR certificate, the CPR test may be exempted. However, Certain examiner would still want to see the candidate performing CPR despite showing the certificate. So in any case, the candidate should be prepared for the test. A note worth mentioning here is that CPR of a drowning victim is slightly different from a non-drowning victim where ABC algorithm is followed and rescue breath is given after assessing breathing prior to chest compression. The third part of the syllabus would be the water test. A total of 9 water tests will be assessed during the exam. Today, I have with me my colleague, Dr. Akmal and also Dr. Eham. They will be assisting me in the demonstration later. We shall proceed with the demonstration after the warm-up session. See you then. Okay, after warming up, next we're going to proceed with our first water test. First water test is uh, swimming on front only. There's three options. The first one is the option of the speed, means to swim 100 meters in less than 1 minute 40 seconds. Second option is the endurance, 300 meters swim with fins in less than 4 minute 30 seconds, or endurance of 300 meters without fins in less than 6 minutes. Three options we are needed to do either one. So again, it depends on the examiner. So usually what I did last time was, I did the third option which is to swim 300 meters without fins in less than 6 minutes. Alright, so next we'll be uh, proceeding with this demonstration.
first water test, the swimming test, swim on front only. I have just demonstrated an endurance swim of 300 meters, time limit of less than 6 minutes. For this test, there's no shortcut to it. You really need to train, make sure you improve your stroke, your stroke is efficient enough so that you can beat the time. So the second water test, it is a reaching rescue. So the syllabus says, this test represents a situation where a non-swimmer has slipped and fallen into the water. The casualty will be in deep water, two meters from the side. Using an article of clothing, demonstrate a reaching rescue and instruct him how to climb out. All right, so we will proceed with the demonstration next. Well, we have just demonstrated a reaching rescue using an article of clothing. As you can see, on the first attempt, the victim could not hold on to the clothes. But don't worry, in case this happened during the exam, you can always try again. Let's look at test number 3, throwing rescue. A non-swimmer is in difficulty 10 meters away in deep water. Demonstrate a throwing rescue using an unweighted rope and secure the casualty in a position of safety. A time limit of 1 minute shall apply, commencing with an uncoil and untangled rope lying on the ground at the feet of the rescuer and ending when the end of the rope has reached the casualty. Let's look at the demonstration. We have just completed the throwing rescue. The syllabus says you have to complete the test within one minute. However, in case you couldn't reach the victim during the first throw, don't worry. Reel back the rope and try again. As long as you could reach the victim with the rope within one minute, no matter how many attempts, you may still pass the test. So next is the fourth water test, which is the cross chest toe. It says, fully clothed, enter shallow water and swim 20 meter to the subject. Demonstrate the reverse and come reassure and approach the subject from behind. Toe 20 meter by cross chest toe. Assist the subject to land. Okay, so we shall proceed with the demonstration.
All right, for the fourth water test just now, the cross chest toe, there are a few points that the examiner may stress on. First thing is, when you approach, you may swim as usual, but as you go near to the victim, you have to keep your head up so that to keep a direct visualization of the victim. Okay, so while approaching the victim, the victim will charge forward. All right, so when the victim charge forward, remember not to go too close. So you have to keep a distance and then do the reverse and in a defense position. Subsequently, give the instruction to keep the victim calm and reassured. Then approach the victim from behind. So in assuming the cross chest position, the movement must be brief so that to caught the victim off guard. Otherwise, in a real situation, if we acted slowly, the victim may turn around and grab you. Okay? So that is a few tips for the cross chest toe. Following the cross chest toe, the next water test would be towing with an aid. Syllabus says a conscious non-swimmer is in difficulty in deep water 50 meters away. A non-rigid, non-buoyant aid is available. Taking the aid, enter deep water, swim 50 meters, and tow the casualty 50 meters to the end of deep water. There is a time limit for this test. For men, it is 3 minutes, and for lady, it is 3 minutes and 15 seconds. So let's look at the demonstration. A little bit comment on the fifth water test, which is swim 50 meters and tow 50 meters with non buoyant aid. Some tips for this is when you swim, you need to reach the victim fast, so swim the fastest stroke that you can swim. If you're good in front crawl, swim front crawl. If you're good in breaststroke, swim breaststroke. All right? As you're about to reach the victim, remember to swim with a head up, no matter it's front crawl or breaststroke. So, keep eye contact with the victim, give instruction, calm the victim, reassure the victim and then clear instruction asking the victim to hold on to your non-buoyant aid, keep the arm straight lying in a streamlined position and you may start your towing 50 meters. Following this, we shall proceed with the next water test. Now we are going to look at the test number 6 which is a combined rescue. The syllabus says 
enter shallow water and swim 20 meters. Submerge and search underwater for 5 meters to recover an object of 4 kg from a depth of at least 1.8 meters. During the search, demonstrate the feet first and head first surface dives. Exchange the object for a subject considered unconscious and not breathing. Tow to the nearest point of support in deep water and demonstrate mouth to mouth resuscitation for 3 cycles. Tow the casualty to shallow water and continue EAR for 5 meters. Land the casualty and place him in the recovery position. There's a lot of instruction in the syllabus. However, later when you watch the video, you'll have a clearer idea what is it about. Well, we have just finished test number 6, Combined Rescue. There are a few pointers here. Number 1, enter shallow water. To enter shallow water, we should never jump into or plunge into the water. Number 2, to swim to the victim, it is not specifically mentioned which stroke to use. So you may swim any stroke that you prefer. Number 3, to land the victim, Bear in mind the victim is supposed to be unconscious. Alright? So to land an unconscious victim, you should grab hold both of the victim's arm and lift the victim up in a straight arm method and not the cross arm method. Okay? So that's all for test number six. We should proceed to the next test. Let's look at test number 7. Test number 7 which is another combined rescue. It says here, a non-swimmer is in difficulty in deep water. 50 meters 
from a point of entry. No aids are available. Enter the water with a straddle jump and swim 50 meters to the casualty. Apply a defensive action and rescue over 50 meters by means of chin toe, which will include a demonstration of the method used to restrain a struggling casualty in bracket a double restraint. On completion of the toe, support the casualty and on the signal from the examiner, assist him to land from the deep end. Again, there are a lot of words. So let's have a look at the video to see what is it all about. We have just completed test number 7, as you can see, to 
to swim 50 meters and 250 meters of a conscious victim. So, for this test, remember that you have to perform straddle jump. The key to straddle jump is to keep your body surface as wide as possible so that you would not submerge in the water in order to keep a direct eye contact over the victim. Next is you have to demonstrate the double restraint. At a halfway swim, you have to show a single restraint. Nearly to the end, another, another struggling from the victim and you have to show double restraint. Okay? And upon signaling from the examiner only, you are allowed to bring up the victim, assist the victim to land. Okay, without further ado, let's move on to the next water test. Test number 8 is the underwater swim. According to the syllabus, it says 25 meter underwater swim without breaking surface. So it means that you have to swim 25 meter underwater at one breath. So this, the pool that I'm going to use is a 50 meter pool. So I have to swim at least half of it without breaking surface. Wish me luck. Well, I've just finished the test number 8, the underwater swim. A little tips on underwater swim is that as you swim underwater, you need to keep your body in a streamline so you glide longer and you require lesser stroke. When you move lesser, and you will be using lesser energy for it. However, to make a perfect swim, you need a lot of practice. I'm sure that with enough practice, you will be able to make it. Finally, we shall look into the last test in the syllabus, which is the releases. It says, to demonstrate the action that might have to be taken in an unexpected situation. For example, in a crowded swimming pool, the candidate will demonstrate releases from three types of clutches as directed by the examiner, following by towing the subject with three towing techniques over 25 meters. So for this test, in a while, I'll be demonstrating a few releases technique, although the syllabus says three technique. So bear in mind, the examiner may choose whichever three clutches or grip of his preference. So the candidate has to be prepared for all. There are a lot of techniques, so I will just demonstrate a few of the techniques. Let's have a look.
there you have it, we've completed with the demonstration of water tests. Hopefully, with the explanation and demonstration of the Bronze Medellin syllabus, all of you will have a clearer idea how to approach and go about the test. Before we go, I would like to thank my colleague Dr. Angmao and Dr. Edham and the cameraman Ilyas and Faiza for assisting me in completing the video. Hope to see you all again. Thank you. Thank you.